Viewers at home, you are welcome to my presentation on the preparation of statutory financial statements for government in accordance with accrual basis, IFSAS. In this presentation, I want to provide a further work example to complement my earlier presentation on ISAS 1, Presentation of Financial Statements, using ICAME 2021 Public Sector Accounting and Finance Question 1 as work example. If this is your first time of coming across my lecture, or if you have not subscribed in the past, please hit the red subscribe button and turn on the notification bell icon so that you'll be notified each time I drop a new video. If you are a returning subscriber, I say thank you and God bless you. The following issues were examined in the question I will use as work example in this presentation. Number one, we have issues one. Issues one, which is all about presentation of financial statements. Presentation of financial statements. Number two, we have ISA 16. ISA 16 on investment property. Investment property. We also have three. ISA 17 on property plant and uh, equipment. And finally, we have ISAS 21 on impairment of non-cash generating unit, uh, impairment of non-cash generating assets, impairment of non-cash generating assets. In addition to the above listed ISAs, the question also requires the preparation of journal entries. It also requires the preparation of journal. So, what is journal? Journal is the prime book of accounts or the books or the book of original entry the prime book of accounts or the book of original entry there are some uses or several uses of journal to which include one we use journal for the correction of errors for the correction of errors two to show the transfer between accounts we use journal to show the transfer from one account to another. Number three, we use journal to record the opening entries. We use journal to record the opening entries. Number four, we use journal to record the closing entries. For recording the closing entries. Five, it can also be used to show the to record the acquisition and disposal of assets on credit. For recording the acquisition and disposal of non-current assets on credit. Our focus is in this presentation is on journal proper. Journal proper. The journal proper will be made in line with the principles of double entry. It will be recorded in line with the double entry principle, though it doesn't form part of the ledger. So what is the rules of double entry? The double entry principle states that for every debit entry, there must be a corresponding credit entry and vice versa. In line with the principle, we debit the receiver, debit the receiver, and credit the giver. 
the left hand side of an account is called the debit side. Debit side means the left hand side of an account, while the right hand side is known as the credit side. The right hand side of an account is known as the credit side, meaning that whenever you are given a business transaction, the first thing you to, to do is to identify the two accounts affected. That is to identify the two accounts in which your recording will be made. They haven't identified the two accounts affected. Then you ask yourself, out of these two accounts, which one is receiving and which one is actually given out? The one that receives the value, you debit it. And the one that gives out the value, you credit it. That is the principle. Other rule I'm going to examine. Number, let me call this one number one rule. Number two, which I'm going to group into 2A, 2B. So we have increase in assets and increase in expenses. Increase in assets and expenses, you debit it. When an asset increases in value, then you debit it. An asset may increase when there is an acquisition of an asset. When you purchase more assets, then that means your asset will increase. And whenever your asset increases, you debit it. Or when you sell on credit, when you sell on credit, then that will affect your receivable. So you sell, you have not received money. That means your receivable as an asset will increase. So you debit it. You debit the receivables account. The money you have with the bank or at the bank is, your, is an asset to you. Where you make more deposit, where you deposit more money into your bank account, then the money you have in the bank will increase. Or if a customer makes some deposit on your behalf, the money in your account will increase. So you debit it. I'm talking about the personal ledger of the customers, not in the bank statement. We are not looking at the bank statement. So don't be confused because at the bank end, the bank is going to credit your account. So I'm not on bank statement now because when you deposit money, the bank will credit your account. But I mean your own personal ledger. When you deposit, you are going to credit your cash book. The bank will lump off your cash book. So that is the rule. Bear that in mind. Then to be to be decrease in assets and expenses. Decrease in assets and expenses, you credit it. So, anytime there is a decrease in assets or expenses, you credit it. Say, so for instance, when you sell part of your asset, that is, anytime there is a disposal of an asset, your non current asset, when you dispose of non current asset, then your non current asset will reduce. So when it reduces, then you credit it. Now, part of your receivables, when you say when they are settled, when customer pays you part of it, that means the balance of your receivable will reduce because the amount they are owing you is not up to what they were owing before. So your receivable reduces. So you credit it. Then when you make some withdrawal from your bank account, when there is a withdrawal from your bank account, the money you have in the bank will reduce. So you credit it. You credit your bank column of your cash book. I mean your own personal ledger. I'm not talking about the bank statement. So withdrawal will be debited by the bank in their statement. But I mean your own personal ledger, your cash book, not the bank statement. So that is for an asset. But for an expenses, when you incur an expenses, then as at the time those expenses were incurred, then your expenses increases, so you debit it. But when part of the expenses were settled, that means the expenses will reduce. When part of them were paid, then that means the expenses will reduce, so you credit it. So that is why we say increase in expenses should be debited, while decrease in expenses should be credited. Bear that in mind. Number three. Let me also have it to be 3A. 
the increase in liabilities, income, and equity. Anytime any of this increase, then you credit it. Credit increase in liabilities. When more obligations are due, not yet paid, then your liability increases. So when liability increases, then you credit your liability second. When more income are earned, when you earn more income, your income increase, then you credit it. Your equity includes your share capital and your reserves. In the public sector, we might have funds account. All your funds increases. When your funds increases, then you credit it. And anything that will lead to the decrease in those funds or government funds, then you debit it. So bear that in mind. Then theory B. Theory B. Decreasing liabilities, income, and equity. You debit it. Anything that will lead to the reduction in liabilities. That is when certain amount of your liabilities are settled. When they are paid for, then your liability reduces. So, because liability reduce, then you debit it. Decrease in liability should be debited. Decrease in income should be debited. Decrease in equity of those funds should be debited. So, anything that leads to decrease in any of these should be debited. So, that is the rule we are going to apply in our journal entry. So, I want to take question as work example. This question is obtained from item May 2021, Public Sector Accounting and Finance. Question number one. Okuku State University is one of the parastatas of Okuku State, but it is not a government business enterprises, GBE. The following information relates to the accounts of the university for the year ended December 31st, 2018. You are given statement of financial position as at December 31st, 2018. Then you have the cost, the accumulated depreciation, and the carrying amount. All amounts are in million. The other cost you have the non current assets. The cost of the non current assets include the land and building. The cost of the land and building is 15,000. The accumulated depreciation is 250, and the carry amount of the land and building is 14,750. Then we also have equipment. The cost of the equipment is 1,000. The accumulated depreciation of equipment is 100, and the carry amount is 900. Then we have the furniture. The cost of furniture is 800. The accumulated depreciation is 80, and the carrying amount is 720. We also have plants and machinery. Cost is 550. Accumulated depreciation is 50, and the carrying amount is 500. Then we also have motor vehicles. Cost is 450. Accumulated depreciation of 45, and the carrying amount is 405. The total cost of all the non-current assets is 17,800. The accumulated depreciation is 525 and the carrying amount is 17,275. Then we also have current assets. The current assets include inventories of 11,000. Then we have receivables of 15,000. We have bank of 3,000. Current asset totaled 29,000. Then the total of non current assets of 17,275. And the current assets of 29,000 giving us the total of all the assets of 46,275. Then we have no current liabilities of 30,000 and current liabilities of 8,000. 
Then you have the total liabilities to be 38,000. Then when you subtract the total liability from the total asset, then you have the net assets of 8,275. We have net assets stroke equity. Under this, we have reserves of 8,275, which agrees with our total net assets. The following transactions, which took place during the year ended December 31st, 2018, were not recorded in the books. The first item, we have note one. The university acquired office equipment worth 150 million naira from Doko Nigeria Limited. The installation and transportation of the equipment amounted to 3 million naira. Half, half of the cost of the equipment was paid during the year why the balance was paid later in january 2019 the university took over the building of a different state college of education the fair value of the building taking over was estimated at 500 million naira at the end of the year then note two the University Teaching Hospital received motor vehicles and laboratory equipment from a UK-based research institute as donation during the year. The intervention was to cut the widespread of Lassa fever in the country. The cost of the motor vehicles and laboratory equipment donated amounted to 20 million naira and 50 million naira respectively. Note 3. The university acquired a motor vehicle for 150 million on 1st of January 2018. Note 4. One of the buildings owned by the university was gutted by fire during the year ended, December 31st, 2018. The current amount of the building as at the date of the fire incidents was put at 160 million naira. The fair value of the building after the fire incidents, incidents as at the end, at the end of the year was estimated by a value to be 130 million naira. That is note four. Note 5 now. The university acquired motor vehicle on January 1st, 2017 at 8 million naira with an estimated useful life of five years. The school decided to dispose of the motor vehicle for 4 million naira at the end of the second year. Note 6. The university acquired computers on January 1st, 2017 at the cost of 1 million naira. The computers have an estimated useful life of 5 years. Due to the fire outbreak in the university on the December 31st, 2018, the computers were badly damaged. and of no use to the school. It was resolved that they should be discarded and written off. The school uses straight line method in depreciating its PPE. Straight line method in depreciating its PPE. Note seven. The university acquired a land in 2018 at the cost of 50 million naira to construct a plaza for rent. Cost of construction was put at 250 million naira 
as at the end of the year 2018. The plaza was estimated to have a useful life of 25 years. It is the policy of the university to depreciate investment properties using straight line method. That is note seven, note eight now. The university adopted full year depreciation policy using the following rates. The first item is Montoveco at 20%, building at 4%, furniture at 10%, Equipment, including laboratory and computers, 20%. Then we have plants and machinery of 15% required. Prepare A, prepare the journal entries. Prepare the journal entries. To record the above transactions for the year ended December 31st, 2018. B, prepare the adjusted statement of financial position as at as at december 31st 2018 that is the question now we want to solve the question in answering this question it is very important you identify the accounting period the accounting year end of okuku state university is december 31st 2018 you have to identify the accounting period. Remember, the accounting period is a period, usually 12 months, covered by the financial statement. So the accounting period of Okuku State, accounting period of Okuku State University will be January 1st, 2018 to December 31st, 2018. That is the accounting period of this institution of Okuku State University. You should bear this period in mind because some transaction occurs outside this period. So as to know when those transactions will be recognized on the basis of the periodicity concept, the periodicity concept or interval concept. So now let's go to let go. Back to the question proper. You want to prepare journal entries to record the transactions. That is the first requirement. So we want to prepare the journal entries. Then we have Okuku State University solution. Okuku State University. So we have journal entries for the year ended December 31st, 2018. You know the period is 2018. So you will have debit and credit side. Debit side and credit side. We have serial number. So, all transactions are in million. All amounts are in million. Now, note one. The university acquired office equipment worth 150 million era. So, the accounts affected are one, office equipment. They've acquired office equipment worth 150 million from Joko Nigeria Limited. Joko Nigeria Limited is the supplier. And Joko Nigeria Limited is the giver. So that is to show that Joko Nigeria Limited, since Joko Nigeria Limited is the supplier, that means Joko Nigeria Limited is the account payable. So it will affect the account payables or Joko Nigeria Limited. So you have acquired office equipment. That means the asset of the entity will increase. That is the office equipment, the equipment of the business of of Okuku State University will increase. After that, an increase in assets should be debited. That means you are going to debit the office equipment account. Then you credit Joko Nigeria Limited account. Or we debit the receiver and credit the giver. 
the giver is Joko Nigeria Limited. So you are going to credit Joko Nigeria Limited and debit the office equipment account. Let me have note one. Note one. So we are going to debit office equipment. And credit Joko Nigeria Limited. And the Joko Nigeria Limited is the accounts payable. So you are going to credit the accounts payables account and you debit the office equipment. Now let me further. The installation, the installation and transportation of the equipment amounted to 3 million naira. The installation and transportation cost of that equipment is 3 million naira. I want to note that the cost of the asset should made up of the purchase cost plus the attributable cost. That means the installation and transportation costs are attributable costs. They must form part of the cost of the asset. So that means the office equipment now will be 150 million plus 3 million, making 153 million. You are going to debit office equipment with the sum of 153 million. 153 million. Then you credit Joko Nigeria Limited. But remember, this cost of transportation was paid, so it will be paid immediately. So that will affect the bank. It will not affect the Joko Nigeria Limited. So it's not a payable. So it will affect the bank. So I want to note that, and the question also went further by saying that half of the cost, half of the cost of equipment was paid during the year. Remember, the cost of the equipment is 150 million. If half of that 150 million is paid, that means half of 150 million will be 75 million. That means 75 million will be paid. That means the only one amount, the only amount that will be left in a campaign, that is Joko Nigeria Limited, the only amount that will be left will be half of 150 million, which is 75 million. Half will go into the bank, which is 75 million will be recorded in the bank. And the remaining 75 million will be left in account payables account. That is Joko Nigeria Limited account. So I want you to bear that in mind. So we credit the account payable. Account payable. With the half of the cost, half of 150 million. Half of 150 million, that gives us 75 million. 75 million. The remaining half that was paid, then you credit bank. That means it will be paid through the bank account. Half of the 150 million, which is 75 million that was paid, plus 3 million, which represent the transportation and installation cost. The, trans the installation and transportation cost of 3 million plus half that was paid, that will be 78 million. I've told you that the purchase cost we made up of the cost of acquisition. Plus, I mean, I've told you that the cost of the asset we made up of the purchase cost plus attributable cost. I want you to bear that in mind. Now, you were also told that the university took over over the building of a different state college of education. They took over the building of a different state college of education, the fair value of the building taking over was estimated at 500 million. Since they have taken over the building, that means the assets of this university will increase. The building will increase. They are having more building now. Since the building was taken over, that means the building has increased. Remember, building is an asset to the firm, to Okoku State University. So I've told you that an increase in asset will be debited. Since building increases, so you debit building account. You are going to debit the building account that you credit takeover grant. So with debit building, building is an asset. With the fair value of the building, which is 500 million, and you credit takeover grant. Wait. 500 million. That is Roma figure one. Two. Roma figure two. 
you were told the university teaching hospital received motor vehicles and laboratory equipment they've received motor vehicles that means they are having more motor vehicles now remember motor vehicles are an asset to them and laboratory equipment these are assets to the university since those assets were taken over that means asset increases an increase in assets should be debited so you are going to debit the motor vehicles and you debit the laboratory equipment with the cost the university teaching hospital received motor vehicles and laboratory equipment from a uk-based research institute as donation during the year they receive it as donation during the year the intervention was to cut it, the widespread of Lassa fever in the country the cost of the motor vehicles and laboratory equipment amounted to 20 million uh, 50 million naira respectively this is the cost of the motor vehicle and this is the cost of laboratory equipment. So you debit those assets since assets increase. I've told you that an increase in assets should be debited. So you debit motor vehicle, motor vehicle with the cost of 20 million. You debit the laboratory equipment with the cost of 50 million. The whole of the grant that was given to them now will be 70 million since you have debited the asset then you are going to credit is and grant is and grant account this aid and grant was given to them as donation you credit it with 70 million being the cost of the motor vehicles and the laboratory equipment received as donation during the period that is note two that is note two Note three, the university acquired the motor vehicle for 150 million. This is an acquisition, and this acquisition was made as of January 2018, the beginning of this current accounting period. So you have acquired motor vehicle, that means the motor vehicle asset increases. So you debit the motor vehicle's account, you credit mode of payment. So since it was acquired and you were not told it's acquired on credit, or you are not given the suppliers, that is to show that. The payment was made immediately. So you debit the motor vehicles, an asset. Then you credit mode of payment, which is the bank. That means money is going out of the bank when you acquire the asset. So you debit motor vehicle and you credit bank account. So the bank, that is, an asset reduces and motor vehicle increases. So you debit increase in asset, credit decrease in assets. So debit motor vehicle and credit bank with the sum of 150 million. So that is three. We debit motor vehicle, that is acquisition of motor vehicle. And the cost is 150 million naira. And your credit bank. You know, both are assets. Motor vehicle is an asset. When you acquire a motor vehicle asset, it increases. But when you make payment through bank, your asset is reduced. So your credit bank. Being the recording of acquisition of motor vehicle during the period. Note 4. Note 4. One of the buildings owned by the university was gutted by fire during the year ended December 31st, 2018. The building was gutted by fire. During the year ended December 31st, 2018. So, the current amount of the building as at the date of the fire incidents was put at 160 million. The fair value of the building after the fire incidents at the end of the year was estimated by a valuer to be 130 million. What only happened to the building is that the value fell from 160 million to 130 million. So, that means the building. Has been impaired. So the impairment, it is not a cash generating unit. So that is impairment of no cash generating assets. That is covered in ESAS 21. ESAS 21 is all about the impairment of no cash generating assets. So it has been impaired by 30 million. The difference between 160 million 
and 130 million. That means you are going to re recognize an impairment loss of 30 million. Impairment loss of 30 million. Then we have impairment loss. You debit impairment loss. Which is the difference between 160 million and the 130 million. So you debit it, that gives us 30 million. Then you credit the accumulated impairment. You credit the accumulated impairment. That is, or you credit the building. Building in order to reduce it from 160 million to 130 million. That is note four. So you debit impairment loss and you credit the accumulated impairments or you credit the building account. That is all about note four. Then note five now. Note five. You were told that the university acquired motor vehicle on 1st of January 2017. Note this, the current accounting period is 2018. And this means that this motor vehicle have been acquired at the beginning of the previous accounting period. That means the current amount of this motor vehicle will be in the current year financial statement. By the current amount, I mean the cost, less accumulated depreciation to date. That means this motor vehicle that have been acquired since the previous accounting period will have been depreciated in 2017. That is the first year. Then it will have been it will have also been depreciated in 2018, being the current accounting period. That means two years depreciation will have been recognized on this motor vehicle to date. Depreciation of 2017 and that of 2018. And you were told the school decided to dispose of the motor vehicle for four million at the end of the second year. You know the second year will be 2018, which is the current financial year. It was disposed of at the end of this current year, which is at the end of 2018. That means two years depreciation will have been charged, leaving the current amount in the statement of financial position. Now, when the motor vehicle is disposed, the asset will reduce. That means you are going to remove it from the motor vehicle, you do recognize that. You do recognize the motor vehicle. The cost of 8 million will be removed. You credit the motor vehicle's account, since motor vehicle is reducing. Then you credit, you debit, I mean, you credit motor vehicle account, that is your asset account, you debit motor vehicle disposal account. Debit motor vehicle disposal account with the cost of the asset. Remember the useful life of this asset is also five years. Those depreciations that have been charged for the two years to have to be recognized. And the proceeds of four million have to be recognized as well. Take note of those three items. So with the cost of the asset disposed now, I say you debit disposal of motor vehicles account, disposal of motor vehicles with the cost of 8 million and you credit motor vehicles account with that same 8 million that is the cost then the depreciation that have been recognized for those two years have to be recognized as well you know your accumulated depreciation will have a credit balance so when you want to recognize it now you debit accumulated depreciation I think depreciation of two years. You know, to calculate depreciation, we have eight million being the cost divided by the life of five years. Depreciation of 2017 and that of 2018, which is two years now. So we have eight million divided by five times two, and that will give us 3.2 million. That is the accumulated depreciation on the motor vehicle to date. So if you debit accumulated depreciation, you are going to credit disposal of motor vehicle account you credit disposal of motor vehicles account with, with that amount 3.2 i remember this motor vehicle was sold for the sum of four million that is the amount received upon the disposal of the motor vehicle with the proceed now 
you debit bank because that amount is received. When it is received, the money, more money will be received. The money in your bank as an asset will be increased. You debit bank account with the sum of four million. You credit disposal of motor vehicles account. Disposal of motor vehicles account with the same four million. One important accounting concept is realization concept. In line with the realization concepts, you recognize profit when goods are sold or services are provided. So, how much is the profit recognized upon the sales of this asset? To calculate profit or loss on disposal, profit or loss or loss on disposal. So, you make use of this format. You start with, you calculate the carry amount. Remember, your carry amount will be what? The cost. Carry amount will be cost. Less accumulated depreciation. The cost less accumulated depreciation to date. So when you less the accumulated depreciation, then you arrive at the carry amount. Then from the carry amount, you learn less your proceeds. We are the proceeds is greater than the carry amount you have the profit but where the carry amount is greater than the proceed then you have the loss in the case of this motor vehicle the cost is 8 million accumulated depreciation of 3.2 million so we have cost to be 8 million accumulated depreciation of 3.2 million so when you have 8 million Minus 3.2 million. Then you have the carry amount to be 4.8 million. From 4.8 million, you now less the proceed. The proceed is 4 million. When you less the proceed of 4 million, then you'll be left with 0 0.8 million. That is, the proceed is less than the carry amount. That means this asset is sold at a loss. You have less loss on disposal. Of motor vehicles loss on disposal so you debit you now have loss on disposal of motor vehicle which will be debited to the disposal account 0 0.8 million you now credit you credit uh, You credit the disposal of motor vehicles account. Disposal of motor vehicles account. The debit loss on disposal, which will be transferred to reserve. You credit disposal of motor vehicles account. That is the entries required to close the disposal of motor vehicle. Then note six. Note six. Note six. The university acquired computers on January first, twenty seventeen. This computer was also acquired in the previous accounting period. That means it will have been used in twenty seventeen and twenty eighteen, making two years. Since this current period is twenty eighteen, it was acquired at the cost of one million naira. The computer have an estimated useful life for five years. The life of this computer is five years as well. The cost is one million. Take note of that. Due to the fire break in the university on December 31st, 2018, the fire that occurred at the end of this current year, the computers were badly damaged and of no use to the school. It was resolved that they should be discarded and written off. The school uses straight line method of depreciation. So you are going to treat it just like disposal. The cost is one million. The useful life is five years. And nothing was recovered. It had been acquired as at the beginning of the previous period. Nothing was recovered from the disposal. It was written off. So now, let's record that. So you debit disposal of computer. Debit disposal 
of computer with the cost of 1 million. You now credit computer's account because you want to recognize your computer. Your computer has reduced. You credit it with 1 million. Then what is the accumulated depreciation on the computer to date? You debit the accumulated depreciation, which will be 1 million divided by the life is the useful economy life is five years times two. 1 million divided by five times two, that gives us 0 0.4 million. That is the accumulated depreciation on the computer to date. You debit the accumulated depreciation and you credit disposal of computer account. Then, I've told you that you will need to recognize profit or loss on disposal. To calculate the profit or loss, I said costless accumulated depreciation will give you the current amount. 1 million minus 0 0.4, that will give us 0 0.6 million. That is 0 0.6 million represents the carrying amount. And nothing was recovered from the disposal of this computer. Since nothing was recovered, that means the proceeds is zero. 0 0.6 minus 0 will still be 0 0.6. So now, this computer now is disposed as at a loss. So you have loss on disposal of computer. Which is the difference between the cost of 1 million less accumulated depreciation of 0 0.4 million. Then we have 0 0.6 million. Then you now credit disposal of computer's account. Which is 0 0.6 million. That is the entry required to close the disposal of the computer during the period. Now, note seven. Note seven. The university acquired the land in 2018 at the cost of 50 million. The land was acquired in 2018 at the cost of 50 million naira. To construct a plaza for rent, this land was acquired to construct a plaza for rent. That is covered in investment property. Investment property, that is IFSA 16. IFSA 16 defines investment property as the property held to earn renter or for capital appreciation or both assets held to earn renter or for capital appreciation or both. This asset is acquired to earn renter. So it is an investment property which is covered in ISA 16. So to construct the cost of the plaza, to construct the plaza for rent, cost of construction was put at 250 million. That means the investment property now will be the cost of the land plus that of the plaza, 50 plus 250, and that is 300 million. 50 million plus 250 million, that will give you 300 million. As at the end of the year 2018. As at the end of the year 2018. The plaza was estimated to have a useful life of 25 years. It is the policy of the university to depreciate investment property using the straight line method. So now the investment property is 50, uh, 300 million now. 300 million. So now let's record it. The policy, you know, it has 25 years. We don't depreciate land because land does not have a predetermined useful life. You are going to, you are only going to charge depreciation on the cost on the cost of the plaza, which is 250 million. That is the only one that will be depreciated, not the whole 300 million. We don't depreciate land. No, the investment property will be 50 million plus 250. Now, we first of all record the acquisition of the investment property. When you acquire, that means you know investment property is an asset to the entity. So, since it is an asset to Okuku State University, you are going to debit the asset, then you credit mode of payment, which is bank. Debit investment property and credit the bank because asset increases 
upon acquisition of the investment property. So, with debit investment property, that is note 7. Note 7. You debit the investment property. Note 7. You debit the investment property. Investment property. With the cost, which made up of the cost of the land and the cost of the plaza. So we have 300 million. 300 million. Then you credit. Bank. When payment is made, bank is the giver. The credit bank account with 300 million. So remember you were told that this property has a predetermined useful life of 25 years. That means the property will be depreciated. You have to calculate the amount of depreciation that will be expensed on acquisition of the investment property. So we have depreciation expense. Remember you were told it has useful life of 25 years. So you have 250 million divided by 25. Remember I've told you that you don't depreciate land. That is why we are not charging depreciation on the whole 300 million. We only charge depreciation on the plaza. And the depreciation expense will be 10 million. Then you credit accumulated depreciation account. You credit accumulated depreciation account. Or you credit the investment property. Investment property with that 10 million. That is entry required to record the investment properties that was acquired during the year. Then note eight. Note eight. Note eight. You were told in note eight that the university adopted full year depreciation policy using the following rates. You are given the rate of depreciation, motor vehicles is 20%, building of 4%, Furnitures of 10%, equipment of 20%, plant and machineries of 15%. It's only the assets acquired during the year that, that you will need to charge depreciation on now. You charge depreciation because it is those information that have not been recorded. You only depreciate those assets acquired during the year. Now, let's go through the journal entry to identify those assets that were acquired. Now, the note one, we have acquisition of equipment. Equipment of 153 million. Then you go through it again. Do you have any other equipment? So, we also have note two. We have laboratory equipment. So, that means our equipment now, we have 153 million plus 50 million. Then we are having 203 million. Now, note three is motor vehicles. So no equipment. Note 4 is impairment. Note 5 is disposal of motor vehicle. Note 6 is also on disposal of computer. Why Note 7 is on investment property. So the only equipment we have that were acquired during the year that need to be depreciated now is the cost of 153 million and the laboratory equipment of 50 million. Now, let's charge depreciation on equipment. Now, we want to depreciate the equipment now during the year. Let's depreciate the equipment. So, equipment depreciation. Depreciation expense on equipment. Depreciation. Depreciation expense. So, we debit it. You know, the rate of depreciation on equipment is given to be 20%. You have 20% of you have the first one to be 153 million plus the laboratory equipment then you are having 203 million if you calculate 20 percent of 203 million the whole of the depreciation that will be charged on equipment will be 40.6 million 40.6 million then you debit depreciation expense account and you credit accumulated depreciation on equipment. Accumulated depreciation 
on equipment with the same amount which is 40.6 million then aside equipment depreciation let's check if there are any addition to the asset we have note one we also have building there is an addition to building i've told you that it's an additional asset that will be depreciated so we want to depreciate our building now depreciation on building depreciation on on building so depreciation expense expense the rate of depreciation on building is four percent and the cost of the additional building is 500 million the one that was taken over four percent of 500 million that will give us 20 million you debit depreciation expense and you credit accumulated depreciation on building with the same amount 20 million that has been recorded then any other additional asset let's go through the journal note one is on office equipment and building which has been taken care of note two we have motor vehicles okay there is an additional motor vehicles in note two 20 million let's go through it then note three also we have additional motor vehicles of 150 million 20 million plus 150 million that will give us 170 million note four is impairment note five is disposal six is disposal and uh, seven is investment property so the only we only have two motor vehicles now note two and note three 20 million plus 150 million now let's depreciate it now depreciation on motor vehicle depreciation on motor vehicle depreciation expense the depreciation rate on motor vehicle is 20 percent 20 percent of the cost we have 20 million plus the second one is 150 million making 170 million 20 percent of 170 million then we have 34 million 34 million you debit depreciation expense with 34 million then you credit accumulated depreciation. Accumulated depreciation on motor vehicle with 34 million. Then, if you go through our journal, note one has been taken care of, where we have office equipment and building. Note two, motor vehicle, has been taken care of laboratory equipment has equally been taken care of with the motor uh, with the first motor uh, uh, equipment we had note three has been taken care of which is motor vehicle note four is impairment loss note five is the disposal of motor vehicle note five is the disposal of motor vehicle that is disposal then it's not an addition then note six is also disposal of computer why this note seven is in uh, its investment property so the depreciation that needs to be charged for the year has been charged then that means we've done with the journal entry now let's go through the requirement b you have to prepare the adjusted statement of financial position adjusted statement of financial position as of december 31st 2018 that is the next requirement now we want to prepare the adjusted Statement of financial position as of December 31st, 2018. So we cannot prepare Okuku State University. Then adjusted statement. Of financial position as at December 
2080. Adjusted statement of financial position as at December 31st, 2018. Then you have carrying amount of the asset. Carrying amount. Let me have accumulated depreciation stroke impairment. Accumulated depreciation slash impairment loss. Then we have cost. Cost. Let me include notes. Cost. Then they have notes. Then all amount in million. Then let's have our non current assets. Now, let's go through our unadjusted statement of financial position. First, the first non current asset in our unadjusted statement of financial position is land and building. With the cost of fifteen thousand and accumulated depreciations of two fifty. Now let me have that as note one. Note one. Working one. That is land and the building. Then we have cost. That is balance brought forward. The cost is fifteen thousand. Then let's go through our land and building and check those items that affect the land and building there. So, note one in our journal we have building. That were taken over of 500,000. Note two, there is nothing like building there. Note three, nothing like building. Note four, is impairment to building. Okay, note five, is multiple variables, and note six, is computer. So we have only 500, and in, in note one, an impairment of 30. To building in note 4. So now the addition we have is 500 in note 1. So we have addition to to building. Uh, that is addition, the one taking over. The building taking over of 500. 500. Then when you add it, we have 15,500. Then let's have our depreciation and impairment. Depreciation and impairment. Depreciation and impairment. Balance brought forward. Then, in our unadjusted statement of financial position, you have accumulated depreciation of 250. Then, don't forget impairment of 30. Then, I will also have depreciation chart for the year. So, we have depreciation of 250. We have impairment loss. Of 50 then we also have depreciation charge for the year that is note 8 in our journal entry depreciation charge for the year on building and that is 20 million that is 20 million that is depreciation expense that is 20 million 
So, sorry, impairment loss is 30 million. So, depreciation expense is 20 million. So, when you sum it up, the depreciation and impairment is 300 million. When you subtract 300 million from 15,500, then you have 15,200. That is the carrying amount. So, we are going to put 15,500 on that cost. Then 300 other depreciation and impairment, and 15,200 as the carrying amount. So now we have land and building, land and building. The cost that is note one. The cost is 15,500. Depreciation and impairment is 300. The current amount is 15,200. After land and building, our own adjusted statement of financial position, the next asset is equipment. The cost is 1,000 and accumulated depreciation is 100. Note two, that is equipment. Balance brought forward, that is cost of 1,000. Now let's go through our journey to identify those equipment we have there. Then in our journal note one, you have office equipment. That is 153. You're going to have an addition of 153. Then we also have laboratory equipment of 50. 153 plus 50. Note 4 is motor vehicle. 5 is impairment. I mean, four, I mean note 3 is motor, note 2 is motor vehicle. 3 is motor vehicle. 4 is impairment. 5 is motor vehicle disposal. And uh, six is disposals of computer. Okay, remember computer was treated as part of equipment. Computer was treated as part of equipment. So that means the disposal, since there is a disposal, that means the carrying amount have to be removed. That means the adjustment to equipment now, you are going to have addition of 153 million. Then you have another one 50 million then you now have disposal of 1 million disposal of 1 million now our equipment now so you have addition of 153 million 153 then we also have Laboratory equipment, the one that was taken that was given as a grant. Let me see donation. And that is 50 million. Then we now have disposal of computer. Disposal. Computer disposed. And that is 1 million. When you remove that, so 1000 plus 153. Plus 50 minus 1 million. 1,000 plus 153 plus 50 minus 1. That will give you 1,202. 1,202. Then we now have depreciation. The depreciation on equipment. So we have depreciation. Alarm brought forward. Depreciation, the one in our unadjusted statement of financial position. Depreciation of equipment is 100. Then, if you pick that 100, let's have the 100. Then, the depreciation expense. The depreciation expense 
expense. That's his charge for the year. So the depreciation expense on equipment, that is note 8. Depreciation expense equipment 40.6 million. 40.6 million. 40.6. Then we also have disposal of equipment. Disposal of equipment. How much is the depreciation on equipment disposed? Remember, disposal of equipment that is computer. The computer disposed. The depreciation is 0 0.4 million, which was debited to accumulated depreciation. So we are going to remove the one on the computer disposed. So we have disposal. Disposal. That is computers. The, the accumulated depreciation is, is 0 0.4 million. So you remove that. Now, if you have 100 plus 40.6 minus 0 0.4, then you have 140.2. So if you remove 140.2 from 1,202, then you have 1,061.8. 1,061.8. So, under cost now, we are going to put 1,202. Accumulated depreciation, we put 140.2. And carry amount, we have 1,061.8. So we have equipment. Now, Equipment notes two. The cost is one thousand two hundred two. Accumulated depreciation is one forty point two. The carrying amount is one thousand and sixty one point eight. So, then we go to our unadjusted statement of financial position. The next non-current asset is furniture, 800 and depreciation of 80. Furniture has no adjustment. So, we, we just write the amount involved directly. Cost, 800, accumulated depreciation, 80, carry amount, 720. Since it has no adjustment. So let's write that. So furniture. Eight hundred eighty and seven twenty. So after that, the next non-current asset we have is plant and equipment. The cost is 550, accumulated depreciation of 50, and carrying amount of 500. Since plant and equipment has no adjustment too, so we write the amount directly, 550, 50, and 500. Plant and uh, equipment. Plant and equipment. 500. I mean 550, 550, 50, and uh, 500. Then, aside the plant and equipment, the next, the next asset we have is motor vehicles. We have some adjustments on that. So, the cost of motor vehicles is 450. 450. That is working three. Working three. Moto vehicles.
balance brought forward cost then we have 450 then we go through our journal what are the motor vehicles we have in our journal then from our note 2 we have motor vehicles of 20 million then note 3 we have 150 million then the note 4 is impairment of building note 5 we have disposal the cost of motor vehicle disposed is 8 million so that means you are going to add 20 million plus 150 million minus 8 million so we have motor vehicles we have a donation the motor vehicle donated and that is 20 million then we also have the one acquired of 150 million we also have motor vehicle disposed we have disposal disposal of 8 million disposal of 8 million if you have 450 plus 20 plus 150 minus 8 then you have 612 then you now have depreciation depreciation we have balance brought forward depreciation from unadjusted statement of financial position the depreciation of motor vehicle from unadjusted statement of financial position is 45 45 the depreciation accumulated depreciation of motor vehicle disposed is 3.2 3.2 million that is the one on disposal so we have the one from one adjusted statement of financial position, and that is 45 million. Then disposal is 3.2 million. Then we have depreciation expense on motor vehicle during the year. That is note 8. Depreciation on motor vehicle expense that is 34 million depreciation accumulated depreciation on motor vehicles 34 depreciation expense is 34 million so we have depreciation expense expense that is 34 million so when you sum it up you have 45 million 45 minus 3.2 plus 34. There you have 75.8 million. 75.8 million. When you remove that from 612, then you have the current amount to be 536.8 million. 0.2 million. 536. Point two. So on that cost you have 612, accumulated depreciation 75.8 and the current amount to be 536.2. So let me record that. Motor vehicle motor vehicle. That is Cost is 612, that is note 3. Note 3, cost is 612. The accumulated depreciation is 75.8 and the carrying amount is 536.2.
Then note seven. We have investment property. Investment property cost is three hundred thousand and depreciation of ten. So now let's have that. Investment property. Investment property. Cost is three hundred. Depreciation is ten. And the carry amount will be two ninety. Why you sum it up? So the total cost. So when you sum up the cost of all the non-current assets, we have fifteen thousand five hundred plus one thousand two hundred two plus eight hundred plus five fifty plus six one two plus three hundred. Then you have eighteen thousand nine six four. That is the total of the cost of all the non-current assets. Now let's sum up the accumulated depreciation. Three hundred plus one forty point two plus eighty plus fifty plus seventy five point eight and plus ten. Then the accumulated depreciation total six five. Six. six by six. Then the carrying amount you have fifteen thousand two hundred plus one thousand and sixty one point eight plus seven twenty plus five hundred plus five three six. Point two plus two ninety. The current amount is totaled eighteen thousand three o eight. After the non current assets, then the next thing is current assets. Current assets. Current assets. Let's go through our unadjusted statement of financial position. Unadjusted statement of financial position. We have current assets there, which include inventories, receivables, and bank. Inventories and receivables has no adjustment, but bank has some adjustments. So now let's write 11,000 and 15,000 for inventories and receivables respectively. So current assets, we have inventories, inventories, 11,000, receivables. 15,000 and the bank I have that to be note 4 bank note 4 from our unadjusted statement of financial position the bank balance is 8,000 let's go through our our journal the first item of bank we have there is 78 now let go and incorporate that in our working working note for so which is bank so balance brought forward the bank balance from our unadjusted statement of financial position which is three thousand then we have uh, amount paid on acquisition of office equipment. Office equipment. We have seventy-eight million that was paid. So, you know, bank was credited there. That means you are reducing your bank balance. Since bank was credited with that seventy-eight million, 
The 78 million was credited to the bank, so that means you are deducting it. But if it has been debited to the bank, that means you are adding it. So, note two has no bank. Note three, we have bank, 150. And bank was also credited. That is acquisition of motor vehicles. Motor vehicles, the bank balance, the amount paid on acquisition of motor vehicles. Motor vehicles, that is note three. The 150 million that was paid. We are going to remove it too. We subtract it because it was credited to the bank. Note, after note three, then note four is impairment, no bank there. Note five, disposal of motor vehicle. Then we have the proceed. If you look at this four million, it was debited to the bank. Since bank was debited, then that means you are going to have it as an addition. That is proceed from disposal of motor vehicle. Disposal of motor vehicle, that is proceed. Proceed from disposal of motor vehicle. That is motor vehicle. Disposed. That is the proceed. And that is 4 million. We are adding it because bank was debited. Then, note, after this note 4, no bank was debited, that is why I've added this. Note 6, there is nothing like bank there. Then, note 7. Note 7, we have, uh, upon acquisition of investment property, 300,000 was paid. Investment property, no bank was credited here, so you are going to deduct it. Okay. Acquisition of investment property. The amount paid is 300,000. So you subtract that. So now let's cast it. So we have 300 minus, I mean 3,000 minus 78. Minus 78 minus 150 plus 4, minus 300. Then you have 2,476. 2,476. That is the amount you are going to have. 2,476. So when you sum up the current asset, 2,476 plus 11,000 plus 15,000. Then the current asset totaled 28,476. 28,476. When you sum up the current asset, and the non current assets, this is total of non current assets 18,308 plus the total of our current assets of 28,476. When you sum it up, 28,303 plus 28,476, then you have 46,784. This is this represents the total assets. Total assets, which is 46, 7, 8, 4. After total assets, back to our statement of financial position, unadjusted statement of financial position. After total assets, the next thing is no current liabilities of 38,000. No current liabilities of 38,000, that has no adjustment. But current liabilities, we have account payable, which is an adjustment. So let's start with no current liability first. No current liabilities. And that is given to be 30,000. 
Then the next thing is current liabilities. From our unadjusted statement of financial position, our current liabilities include you are given our current liability to be 8,000. Then, if you go back to our working note, the first note, note one, in our journal, you have a account payable of 75 there. You are going to add the account payable of 75 to the 8,000. That will be 8,075. So we have 8,000 plus 75. I've told you that this 75 is the account payable and the 8,000 is from our unadjusted statement of financial position. Then you have 8,075. So when you sum it up, 8,075 plus 30,000, then you have the total of our liability to be 38,075. You now deduct the total liabilities from the total asset. You know our total asset is 46,784. Minus total liabilities of 38,075. Then the total liabilities is, uh, the, the net asset will be 8,709. That is our net assets. After net assets, the next thing will be the equity. That is net asset stroke equity. Net assets stroke equity. Let's have that to be notified. net assets for equity. Then if you look at the unadjusted statement of financial position, from our unadjusted statement of financial position, the only thing we have there, under net assets for equity is reserves of 8275. Reserves of 8275, you are going to incorporate adjustment to the reserves. Now let's have reserves. That is note 5. Let's have our note 5 now. Note 5. So which is reserves. The reserves as per unadjusted statement of financial position, which is 8275. 8275. You are going to incorporate our adjustments into this. We want to incorporate the adjustments. Now, what are those things that will affect our results? So, go through our journal. The note one in journal doesn't affect results. We only have office equipment, account payables, bank, and building. Then, okay, we also have takeover grant, 500, which is building. Takeover grant on building. Take over grant. Oh, but let me let me record that separate. We can we can include it. We can add it to our results, but we can also separate it. So we have the note two. That is donations. Donations of seventy. Let's add it to our results. I've told you that you can you may also add your takeover that grant or you separate it. So donation donations. The donations received for both motor vehicles and laboratory equipment. And that is 70 million. Then back to the journal. Note three is motor vehicles and bank doesn't affect research. Then note. Four is impairment loss. Impairment loss will affect it. It will reduce our income. So we have impairment loss of 30 million. So we remove it. Note 
five. We had disposals of motor vehicle. So it is the profit or loss on disposal that will affect the results. Okay, we have loss on disposal of 0 0.8 million. Loss on disposal of 0 0.8 million. Loss on disposal of motor vehicle. Motor vehicle. That is 0 0.8 million. Loss will reduce your income. Then we also have note C, which is also on disposal of computers. Then that we also have loss on disposal of computer. That is also 0 0.6 million. Loss on disposal of computer. Loss on disposal of computers that is 0 0.6 million 0 0.6 million then notes 7 we have depreciation of investment property that is 10 million Depreciation of investment property. Depreciation of investment property of 10 million. Depreciation should be expensed as well. Note 8. We have depreciation on equipment. That is 40.6 million. Depreciation on equipment, which is 40.6 million. Then that same note eight, you have depreciation on building, that is 20 million. Depreciation depreciation on um, building that is 20 million then that same note 8 we have depreciation on um, motor vehicles that is 34 million depreciation on um, motor vehicles that is 34 million. So now you cast it. You have 8275. 8275 plus 70 minus 30 minus 0.8 minus 0.6 minus 10. Minus forty point six minus twenty minus thirty four. Then we have eight two zero nine eight two zero nine. After that, you have the takeover grant. Takeover grant, that is from note one. The building taking over, 500. I've told you that you may add it to your reserves, but I want to separate it. So our reserves, that is note five, is 8209. That is what we have as reserves from note five. 8209. Then, we now have takeover grant. Takeover grant of 500. That is the takeover grant from building of 500. So we add. So takeover grant.
grand. That is from building, taking over, which is 500. If you add the 500 to 8,209, you have 8,709, which agrees with our net asset here. It must agree with our net asset. That is the end of the solution to the question. Please be expecting more from me. Be expecting more from me from time to time. And if you have not subscribed, don't forget to click on the red subscribe button and turn on the notification bell icon so that you'll be able to receive notification message each time I drop a new video. Thanks.